And so next year, um, you know, which is coming right up, the new kindergarten class will join. So it will be in Staten Island K through three. Um, that will be in January when the new kindergarten class would get their accounts. Um, and so that would that would be who could get, you know, receive the community scholarships in Staten Island in the pilot community where this started, which again, I mentioned earlier, it would be K next school year, it would be K through seventh grade. And so as we move into this next school year, really this is like a clarion call to all New Yorkers, really anyone who went to public elementary school in New York City. And I know probably so many of your readers went to school in Staten Island and it would just be so wonderful for um, to hear your stories and to see how you might be able to contribute uh, to the students' accounts from the schools from where you came. Um, and so both because it, is such an innovative and interesting way to try to have an impact on on kids in public school. And because I know that the magic of the things that she has supported and worked on in her career, um, it really was very easy for me to want to be able to play to play a part in this and support um, support kids not only at the schools that I've gone to, but but really across New York City. So Staten Islander News is here today with Deborah Allen Glickstein. Deborah Allen <clears throat> has spent more than 20 years working with communities to measurably expand economic opportunities. She currently serves as the founding executive director of NYC Kids Rise, a nonprofit that provides a community tool platform New Yorkers can use to build wealth in their neighborhoods and support the college and career training of their children. Previously, she served as the executive director of New York City's Office of Financial Empowerment, the first municipal office in the country focused on creating innovative financial products, programs, and services to enable asset building and wealth creation for low-income New Yorkers. She has served as the Vice President of Strategy and Program Development at the New York City Housing Authority and co-founded Urban Upbound, a nonprofit organization that supports public housing residents to achieve economic success through college counseling and financial planning. Deborah Ellen earned a BA with honors from Wesleyan University an MBA from the NYU Stern School of Business and an MPA from the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. So the first question we had was, um, how was the NYC Kids Rise program conceived of? Uh, who had the initial idea and how did they put that into action? Um, well, hi there, everyone. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much to the Staten Islander for having me this morning. Um, and giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about the Safer College program to Staten Islanders. Um, so NYC Kids Rise and the Safer College program, it has been really is a story of so many different folks across government, across communities, across philanthropy, across, um, across neighborhoods, really coming together to build a platform so that communities can really invest in their children. Um, and so we have been at this for about um, seven years in Queens. We're just finishing the, seven, the seventh year there. So in, um, in School District 30, which includes uh, Long Island, City, Astoria, Woodside, Sunnyside, East Elmhurst, Corona, and Astoria, um, the, young, the youngest, the oldest students are about to graduate sixth grade. So um, in that part of town, it's every kindergartner and sixth grade have a scholarship account for college or career. And in Staten Island, we have um, nearly every kindergartner, first and second grade, graders have a scholarship account for college and career. Um, and how did you become involved with the program yourself? Well, I've been um, very lucky in that I have been um, working really on, and I appreciate you taking the time to read some of my, my biography earlier, really working on figuring out, partnering with communities to build financial assets and really uh, improve economic opportunities for communities for really my um, more than 25 years at this point. Um, and so this is really, uh, you know, the culmination of so much of that. And I was uh, lucky enough to join um, the Office of Financial Empowerment with the city um, 
about almost 10 years ago now, um, and be able to partner with the commissioner at the time, Julie Menon, and others, uh, the Gray Foundation, to really get this get this effort going. Oh, awesome. So, um, and the Office of Community Empowerment was, you said that's been around for like 10 years from the previous mayor, I guess, the previous administrations? Um, well, the city, uh, the Office of Financial Empowerment was where I was the executive director and that was, um, that was, yes, I joined that in, I believe it was actually in February of 2015. Nice. So, um, can you tell us uh, a little bit about how the program works? Absolutely. So let me start by saying, um, and I gave some of the kind of little, the specifics a little earlier, but there are now across the entire city of New York, more than 200,000 uh, students with uh, NYC scholarship accounts with more than $30 million accumulated. And so the way this, this works, sort of the tactical, the tactical pieces are that when you now start kindergarten, thanks to so many different folks, you will have a financial resource for your future. You get in an, you have the opportunity to start kindergarten, um, get the information, you have the opportunity to um, determine uh, if you don't want to participate. Uh, most everyone at this point determines that they do want to participate. And then in January, you generally will get, your child will get their NYC scholarship account. That account is seeded with an initial $100 and there is an opportunity for um, families to then take some additional steps. The first step, which is really, um, you know, like in some ways the most exciting step is when families for the first time activate and view their accounts and see that they have this money for their future. So now just by going to public school, public elementary school in Staten Island, you child will have something for their educational future starting in kindergarten. And so um, once a family will activate and view their account and see this money, they will earn another $25 in rewards in their scholarship account. Families can then take some additional steps, including opening up their own college and career account and linking it, um, putting their first $5 in, and then we will, um, and then they have the opportunity to continue to deposit into those their account, and then NYC Kids Rise will match $100 up to the first $100. And then for each of those steps, a family um, earns another $25. So in all, you, you get the original $100, a family can earn up to another $175 by taking these steps. And then um, and a very important, exciting piece of this platform is that there is a mechanism for other institutions, other New Yorkers, other people, other organizations and systems to add more money into the scholarship accounts. And um, that is what we call community scholarships. And we're, I know we're gonna talk a little bit about the New York City Public Schools Alumni Community Scholarship, which is really a groundbreaking effort that we just piloted this past year. Oh, awesome. Um, and then I know that you had uh, mentioned, um, as far as like the scholarship accounts, this is kind of like a thing where they they can put money in, but they can't take money out until they graduate from high school, or is it something like that? So um, every kid, every kid, right, gets an NYC scholarship account starting in kindergarten unless their family says that they don't want it. This is an account that actually the um, that's the original hundred dollars, and then the rewards that family earns by taking those additional steps called the building blocks goes into that account. And then any additional community scholarships also go into this account. So this is an account that NYC Kids Rise actually owns. And the reason why NYC Kids Rise owns it is so that it doesn't affect public benefits or immigration status. And it also, um, and, and yes, at the time of um, you know graduation, when kids are able to move on and move on to their next step, they will be able to begin to draw down on that money. And I should add that the money is invested in a New York 529. Um, and that is governed by the rules of the New York 529. So the way the money will be able to be used for tuition, for college, um, college tuition, certain vocational schools, uh, computers, books, you know, it, there's a broad uh, educational uses that are allowed for this. And it's, um, it's really exciting because it's very much um, both research and lived experience know that these dollars really make a difference. You know, oftentimes a difference between $500, $1,500, $3,000. That is the difference why um, young people may not actually be able to get their degree ultimately, drop out, not go. 
Um, and what we're really doing here is sending a message from the earliest of ages that we all believe in you. Um, the collective, whether it be the city, NYC Kids Rise, your community, your school, and that there is going to be a resource for you to help you on that journey. Oh, fantastic. Um, and then your organization, FAQs and previous articles mentioned that local businesses and community members, such as graduates of a given school, can participate in funding the kids' scholarship accounts. Um, can you please tell us like how this works in practice? Absolutely. So this is what is like so exciting in so many ways about this, that this is about all different parts of a neighborhood and a city coming together to support our kids and really sending the message to to families and to communities that you're not on your own. So um, as I mentioned, right, it's the initial hundred dollars. Families can earn additional rewards by taking additional steps. Families can open up their own account and put their own money in, in, in that account. But then communities, businesses and others can add more money into through community scholarships into the scholarship account. So the way that works in practice, and I know, you're, again, you're going to hear from a New York City Public School alumni who, who just did that for his alma mater, PS29. Um, so, so an example would be that um, basically a, a, a person or an institution, I'll give one example, there is a car dealer in, um, in Jackson Heights, Queens, and they have determined that for every car they sell, they are going to donate $20 into the accounts of the students at um, at one particular school, PS 148 in East Elmhurst. And so what happens is they send NYC Kids Rise a check every month um, is the, is, as um, the, the accumulation of the $20 um, in aggregate that has been sold. And then NYC Kids Rise will, will deposit that money into the scholarship accounts evenly across the all the students at the school that they had put in place. And so um, I do highly encourage and support and recommend um, Staten Islanders, New Yorkers, anyone really to think about um, what resources they might be able to bring to put to local, whether it be uh, a certain grade at a local school, whether it be a, a New York City Housing Authority of Public Housing Development, whether it be um, you know a whole school district, there's so many different ways that um, that folks can contribute. Maybe maybe one more example. Um, we had the Astoria Houses Tenant Association, an association um, at a nature development. They they set forth to raise a thousand dollars for every child that lived in Astoria Houses at the time with a scholarship account. So they did a big campaign and brought all these different community groups together to contribute and to add that money into that account. Um, and, and maybe one more quick example, a local bank, Webster Bank, they decided to do $15,000 into um, the accounts of students at one elementary school. So there's all these different ways that can um, different groups can come together to add money. Oh, nice. And so they can, so a, a local business can basically choose to uh, donate to everyone in a particular housing unit, uh, housing authority center, um, everyone in a particular school or grade. Um, is it by class as well? Like, can, can they say, I want to do just my Miss, Miss Hopkins class? I, I <laughs> thank you so like much. That? Not at this time. At this time, the smallest unit that, um, folks could select to do would be um, an entire class, so like a first grade class, a kindergarten class at a particular school, or a class level at a NYCHA development. Um, but again, you can also do a community district, and I didn't mention that before, a community district wide um, or even a school district wide, which would obviously be larger amounts. I would, I'll give you one more example. We, um, we, we had, um, uh, Seamless Grubhub, you know, the food delivery service several years ago, they decided that they would um, have let customers round up and the, the, the results of that would be distributed to the entire school district evenly of school district 30 in Queens. And so I believe every student got an another $50 or so. And so the magic of this is that money adds up over time and so it's really exciting we have kids in a store you know it's fifth grade graduation season and in the pilot communities where this started you have kids with thousands of dollars graduating from fifth grade thanks to these community scholarships and it's you know it's about 
the money, but it's also about this, this message that you're letting the families, the students know and reinforcing what's possible that the community believes in you and that, you know, you, you should think big because, you know, there's no reason to set your sights small is that there's resources for you to really think about the dream about your future. And this is uh, not restricted to just elementary school as it, they can donate at any uh, grade level. So um, in Staten Island right now, um, the the students who have these accounts, because this started three years ago in um, across the entire city, it's only kindergarten, first and second graders. So depending on when this interview airs, you know, it might be rising first, second and third graders. And so next year, um, you know, which is coming right up, the new kindergarten class will join. So it will be in Staten Island K through three. Um, that will be in January when the new kindergarten class would get their accounts. Um, and so that would that would be who could get, you know, receive the community scholarships in Staten Island. In the pilot community where this started, which again, I mentioned earlier, it would be K, next school year, it would be K through seventh grade. Oh, cool, okay. Um, and then how many, oh, so this hasn't been around long enough for the college bound students to have used uh, their scholarship funds, it sounds like. Not so yet. So there's an, another few years down the road, okay. Another, um, yeah, more than a few. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, oh, and and I think you had mentioned that if a business, a business can't really contribute to a specific student's account unless it was done through like the family or something. Well, right. So a business or a neighborhood association or, um, you know, would actually want to contribute to all of a set of students. And you know, we're not, we don't need to talk about such big amounts of money, right? Because if you're talking about a class, a student, a grade of students that is 50 children, the minimum deposit, the minimum contribution would be five dollars per children per child. So um, it would be five times fifty, which my I think that's 200, no wait, it's 250 dollars. So that's that's something for a business. Or you know, if you wanted to do more, like a thousand dollars a child, right? That's bigger. But the whole point here is that, of course, we want the kids to have as much money as possible. But even just having a small dollar account, the research is you're three times more likely to actually go to college. And that is in large part because that you know that you have something and that impacts a child's beliefs and expectations as well as a family's. Oh, cool. OK. Um, so in the story that was recently provided to us, um, several students who had graduated from a particular public school were able to fund uh, the scholarship accounts of the class they were a part of. Um, is this a common occurrence and um, and if you could describe for us how that would happen also, like how th how they did that um, and how that someone else could do the same. Those were individuals, so, I think. Absolutely. So this year um, was so exciting because it was the first ever year, the birth of the New York City Public School Alumni Community Scholarship. And what has now been set up right across the entire city and across of all of Staten Island. So there's 57 schools elementary schools that have children that that have now scholarship accounts, um, that there is a way, right, to add more money to these accounts. So thanks to like kind of the genius ideas of a few public school alumni who went to elementary school, they said, wait, this is so awesome. This is now a way for me to give back to where I used to be sitting, you know, and also to share my story, share like, look, look what I've been able to do. Let me, you know, let's figure out a way that I can um, connect and, and really you know, want to want to give back to my community. And so as a result of that, it was amazing. Like this just caught caught on so fast. And within such a short period of time, there was I think it was 39 public school alumni, including two from Staten Island um, who um, from PS 29 and PS 60. And I know you're going to hear from from one of them shortly. And so, you know, sidebar recruit the, as a recruitment mechanism. All you Staten Islanders out there, um, if you went to elementary school, public elementary school, this is something that you can participate in next this next year. Um, and so we wrap the alumni kind of came together. They either wrote their own check 
or they, you know, asked friends and family in their network and raised some money. Maybe they had an employer that would match it. And the minimum was $5 a student, as we just talked about. Um, and thanks to this work and, and thanks also to the Gray Foundation and Coleman Ventures, we were able to really match um, the alumni contributions as well as add the kindergarten class. And so it's pretty amazing that um, we were able to deposit into the accounts more around $400,000 across these 30, 34 school communities, including two in Staten Island, as I just mentioned. And um, it impacted 7,400 students, 7,400. So um, this, this last year was super exciting because um, it was the first ever New York City Public School Alumni Community Scholarship. So now that the account infrastructure is across the whole city and that, you know, there's nearly every kindergarten, first and second grader in public school has these accounts, there's this mechanism for folks to be able to give back. And so there were a few alumni who went to elementary school um, in New York City they decided they had this brilliant idea that they would this is they wanted to be able to get back to the elementary school that helped them get to where they are and they also wanted to be able to at least they were open to telling their own stories about their college and career journeys and really you know demonstrating what's possible for kids um and so from that this amazing scholarship opportunity was born um, and we had 39 alumni who went to elementary school, including two in Staten Island, from one from PS29, who you're going to hear from Mark, and from another person, Neil, from PS60, who raised and contributed um, community scholarships to the kindergarten, first and second graders from where they from where they came. Um, and what was amazing is we were also able to get philanthropy to match these contributions, thanks to the Gray Foundation and Coleman Ventures. And so um, we ultimately had more than $400,000 be um, distributed into accounts uh, across 34 school communities. Um, and ultimately 7,400 students were impacted and each of them got different amounts of money depending on the alumni, uh, what the alumni contributed. So in some cases, uh, some students got $10 and other cases, students got $500. And this is sort of the beauty of the customization and like what's possible with this with this platform. And so as we move into this next school year, really this is like a clarion call to all New Yorkers, really anyone who went to public elementary school in New York City. And I know probably so many of your readers went to school in Staten Island and it would just be so wonderful for um, to hear your stories and to see how you might be able to contribute uh, to the students' accounts from the schools from where you came. Um, and so I'm gonna make sure that we have our, um, our email address, which would be info at nyckidsrise.org if you're interested in potentially spearheading an alumni community scholarship or learning more. Um, and you can also call our hotline, which is 1-833-543-7473. Again, 1-833-543-7473 if you're interested in figuring out a way that you can get involved. We will officially launch this next campaign um, in the fall. Awesome. And um, are there any parents that do opt out of the program? And uh, what percentage of parents do that? And what are their reasons for doing so? This is generally um, every kid in uh, the city has these accounts in kindergarten, first and second grade. Um, and the very few folks opt out. Um, I would say it's um, nearly every kid, which is something that we're really excited about. And it's really important that this is a universal program. Awesome. And what is some of the feedback that you've received about the program from students whose families are using it or have used it? You know, I hope one day you'll, you can have someone on the show and they and folks can really speak for themselves. But, you know, the, this this the beauty of what we're building again, and there's so many folks who have contributed ranging from, you know, the New York City schools to New York City public schools principals, parent coordinators, parents, uh, tenant leaders, uh, other policymakers, elected officials, philanthropy, that, you know, this is the idea that like people aren't, families are not in it alone. And so it's that, that ethos that families really, really seem to react to and students react to. And also it's real money. Literally schools across Staten Island are working with 
families to view and activate these accounts. That's literally, that's part of what schools are doing as part of college and career readiness curriculums in elementary schools and that they're seeing, families are seeing for the first time, look, there's money for my kid for college and career and I'm not on my own. Right, right. And um, I guess, what is the ultimate goal about, uh, of the Kids Rise program? Um, really what, what has been created here is is that the hope is that every student in public school will have a resource for their educational futures and they will know that from the earliest of ages and so that and, and they will feel the support from again as i mentioned all these different stakeholders and ecosystems and that that you know students will see and have options you know this is all about creating options for for students no matter what zip code you live in no matter where you're born that your future is bright so you'll be able to kind of figure out what you want to do and really contribute to to our city awesome <clears throat> can you can you tell us a little bit about um why you or your organization feels that a college education is important the the Save for College program is all about options. It's all about making sure that, you know, that students in communities are able to, you know, achieve their full potential and achieve what's possible and making sure folks are have access to technical credentials, education um, and earning power so that they can, you know, they can achieve what they want to achieve in their lives. Oh, fantastic. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add uh, today? I just, I just want to say to all the Staten Islanders out there that if you have a kindergartner first or second grader, make sure that you're checking out our website and make sure you are completing the building blocks, including activating and viewing your account, opening up your own account, beginning to put your own money in those accounts, call our hotline if you have any questions. Everything we have is in 10 languages. And if you're a New York City public school alumni that went to elementary school in New York City, join us, you know, share your story, be a part of it. It's not, if you have money to contribute to do a community scholarship, that's wonderful too. Um, and if you're just interested, reach out to us to learn more because this is all about a piece social infrastructure across New York City being a part of um, the fabric of all of our neighborhoods. So oh, that's awesome. And also, um, yeah, I, I also uh, thought it was interesting that you were mentioning there was an alumni from PS60. I went to PS60 also. <laughs> Listen, see, this is what happens. And let me tell you, the power of what is being built here is about all of us, truly. There's 200,000 families that have kids with these accounts. They are, and, I, and as I keep having these conversations, it's amazing, certain schools keep popping up. And the idea that New Yorkers, folks coming together to support our kids in neighborhoods, across neighborhoods, it's incredibly powerful. And I cannot wait to see where this is gonna go. Oh, awesome. So I now know also that PS60, I have written you down. <laughs> <laughs> And and also, uh, the other thing I just wanted to ask, I, I was thinking about this a little bit. Um, it, is there anything with interest on the money that goes into these accounts? Like, do they earn interest or is it a different type of account? Well, it is. Um, that's a wonderful question. This, these are 529 accounts. It's invested in the market. And so, um, you know, this is part of the work that we've done here is creating access to capital markets. And this is, you know, a 13 year time horizon. Um, and the idea here is that over time, the money will, will, you know, I can't, can't guarantee it, but will likely grow over time. Um, and that there is an opportunity for also with additional community scholarships added into these accounts. Um, so, um, you know, part of also the work that we didn't talk about too much today and I'm happy to come back at a later time is to the financial education that is happening in the classroom and then also other opportunities for um, financial education for families. Oh, fantastic. Um, well, th so that was all the questions that I had, and it was really, really great to uh, meet with you today. And um, we're really happy to learn about uh, the Kids Rise program, and uh, we hope that you guys are really successful in, um, in you know, helping more kids to be able to go to college, because I think that's awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Staten Islander News is here with um, Mark Foggin.
um, as interim direct executive director of the Arab American Family Support Center, Mark Foggin is dedicated to strengthening the organization's capacity to deliver culturally and linguistically competent social services to immigrants and refugees. Most recently, Mark served as an advisor and a co-founder of Public Works Partners, where he brought a blend of strategic perspectives and operational know-how to dozens of mission-driven initiatives. An executive with 30 years of experience shepherding nonprofit, entrepreneurial, and government organizations through transitions to become stronger and more sustainable, Mark has developed smart solutions for clients through strategic program design, policy analysis, and the creation of compelling proposals on behalf of organizations seeking public or institutional funding. Mark received an MPA from NYU's Wagner School of Public Service and a BA in Geography and Urban Planning from Hunter College at the City University of New York. He is an alumnus of the Coro Leadership Center, New York. So good morning, Mark. It's great to have you with us. Good morning. That sounds really impressive when you put it all together, but I, I have to say that's the magic of my public school education, at least until I went to NYU for grad school. Awesome. Um, so uh, I wanted to ask if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and about your background and kind of like, sure. that'd be great. Yeah. Um, born and raised on Staten Island. I, I happen to live in Brooklyn now, but uh, my family goes back many generations on Staten Island and, and I um, we, we moved around a lot, which I think was probably the story of folks my age, um, you know, gr grew up on the North, sh born on the North Shore, moved to the South Shore. Um, but really some of my most formative years were when I lived in Castleton Corners and, and went to PS29. Um, since I graduated from school, I have been in and around, as you said, kind of the, the mission-driven part of New York City uh, for my entire career. I worked in city government. Um, I have been doing consulting. Um, I work now with nonprofit organizations. The place I work now, the Arab American Family Support Center, is a settlement house that helps new immigrants get um, settled and started here um, in, in the United States and in New York City in particular. Um, our name is Arab American, but we actually serve a, a huge population of folks from the Middle East, yes, and North Africa, but also South Asia, uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India. Um, and it's um, it's exactly the sort of things that, you know, I think this program helps to um, help support is getting people started and on their journey and their kids on their journey to getting an education and a job here in the United States. Oh, awesome. And how did you learn about the Kids Rise program? Well, because I spend a lot of time in and around um, interesting nonprofits, um, I first got to know it that way. And I, I happened to know the person that founded it, Deborah Ellen Glickstein, for a long time. Um, and so both because it is such an innovative and interesting way to try to have an impact on, on kids in public school, and because I know that the magic of the things that she has supported and worked on in her career, um, it really was very easy for me to want to be able to play to play a part in this and support um, support kids not only at the schools that I've gone to, but but really across New York City. Oh, fantastic! And uh, so, what made you want to donate through the program? Like I said, it's um, it's a pretty compelling story, right? Like um, I, I took for granted that when I was growing up, I felt really supported. Um, in school by certainly my teachers. Um, I was, uh, you know, felt very supported by my family and my friends and their friends. Um, and, you know, I don't know, maybe it's because of the age I'm at, but I feel like there was more of an opportunity for the community to come together and just be a part of my life growing up. Now, you know, between devices and all the kinds of things that draw our attention away, um, that sense of community is a little bit harder to come by naturally. And what's so compelling about what NYC Kids Rise does is, yes, they help they help students and their families set up safer college or safer training programs. Um, and that's super important because it's a tool that everyone should use and, you know, it's not the easiest thing to set up. But the real magic to me is that it also gives the opportunity not just for families to make contributions to those accounts, but for this wider community that, um, uh, you know, to me, I think 
I just I felt the need to to want to be more involved. Um, if you have a kid that's in school, maybe you're volunteering, um, you're going on class trips, you're uh, maybe volunteering for the parents association. Um, you might even give a financial contribution for a particular event. But if you don't happen to have kids in school and yet still feel like it's really important and compelling to help the public school system, this is a great way to do that. I happen to do it with a, you know, a somewhat larger donation, but you know, if somebody felt like they wanted to give 10 or 15 bucks, you can do it this way. And, and that really gets multiplied across um, all the kids in all the city schools that are participating. Oh, nice. And were you an alumnus of the class or school to which you made your donation? You were. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it depends on how you say what, what you, how you define alumnus. But um, like I said, I moved around a lot. So I was actually at PS29 twice. I started there in kindergarten because I lived down the street. My family happened to move out of the city for a little while, but we came back pretty quickly. Thank goodness. Um, and so I did second grade there as well. Um, I still remember Miss Krongold was my kindergarten teacher and Miss Urbass was my second grade teacher. Um, and then we moved down to the South Shore and I, I finished up at PS36 in Annadale. Um, but some of my most formative memories of my childhood uh, all take place in and around the PS29 school building. Um, I was just back there a couple of weeks ago and it was kind of amazing the, the rush of memories that came back to me when I'm standing outside. Oh, awesome. And uh, what grade were the students in who received the scholarships you funded? So I think the way the program works now is that, uh, especially when you're giving through the community uh, scholarship program, it, it goes to um, uh, the grades that are participating. I think it's kindergarten, first and second. Um, and I think that's about 270 kids at PS29. Oh, nice. And um, I'm not sure if you've gotten any feedback from the students whose scholarships were uh, are being funded, um, or if you had met with anybody who had discussed kind of like how the students are feeling about it. I haven't specifically yet, but I um, there was a, a wonderful event that NYC Kids Rise and the, the school's chancellor put on a couple of weeks ago um, at Tweed, which is the folks probably know the headquarters building for the Department of Education next to the City Hall. And um, I got to talking with somebody from the District 31 office and um, trying to find a time that I can come and visit the school in the, hopefully in the coming weeks before school lets out. I guess we don't have, uh, looking at the calendar, may have to be next school year, but I'm pretty excited to do that. Oh, awesome. And um, so, okay. And, what was most important to you uh, when you were in those grades? So kindergarten, first, second grade. I don't know. Do you do we know enough to know like what's important <laughs> to us then? Um, I just, you know, looking back, I just feel so lucky that I felt so, like I said, so supported. Um, it was some of my earliest memories of a sense that there was um, life beyond the house, right? Like you start to get out in the world and meet other people. You start to get to know at least beyond storybooks like what people do for a living um you know that part of staten island is a lot of firefighters and police officers so i, I just I, I had a sense that there are all these people kind of working to support the place that i lived in um and those were you know those are some of my earliest memories or the times that i kind of have the earliest memories of, of making those connections and I don't know, that's not everyone's story, but at least in my case, I think it was a, a big part of why I chose to stay in this kind of public service nonprofit arena, first in city government and now, you know, working specifically with nonprofits. I have to imagine that that kernel of an idea came from, from when I was in school and, and starting to have some of those first experiences. Oh, that's nice. So uh, what would you say um, is the value or importance of a college education? Well, you know, it's interesting. One school of thought is, um, you know, a generation or two ago, a high school diploma was enough to kind of get your foot in the door at a lot of jobs, and then they would train you. But that's just not the way the world works anymore. Um, most places that you go to work expect you to have a certain level of ability and training. And that has, from I think a lot of people, translated into meaning 
that in undergraduate education, whether it's an associate's or a bachelor's, is kind of the baseline that you need in the professional world. Um, and so it just, I know the studies say that uh, young people of college educations earn more straight away, earn more over a lifetime, and that's that's really compelling. But to me, what's really special about this program and NYC Kids Rise is it acknowledges that not every kid is going to do that or excels in that environment or if it's a kid, young person. Um, and if you want to go and learn a technical skill or trade, um, the savings program allows you to do that. And that's huge on a couple levels. One is it opens up opportunities after school for all those kids that would have maybe struggled in college. And two, you're, um, you're earning money right away as soon as you're done with your training. And that's, um, there's no getting around it. As great as programs like NYC Kids Rise are, it's still most, almost everyone's still going to have to take out loans. And to not have to worry about that and know that you can go another route, um, to me, was one of the most innovative aspects of this program is it, it'll, it acknowledge that reality for a lot of young people and creates a pathway for them. Nice. And what would you say to others, whether they're alumni or business owners uh, that are considering donating to the program? I mean, I'm a total evangelizer. So I've already started talking to some of my classmates about doing this the next time a community scholarship opportunity is there. I mean, I'm all in. So I'm talking to a half dozen different people. If even, you know, if every one of them even talks to one other person, pretty soon you're talking about real money. Um, and, and again, because we're, this money is being collected and put into students' accounts at such a young, such an early part of their um, educational journey, there's the opportunity for that to grow into meaningful dollars over the course of 10 or 12 years in school. And look, it may not be enough for everyone to, uh, or, or even for anyone to fully pay for college, but just having that first chunk of change um, knowing how daunting it can be to think about paying for college or even applying for financial aid. To me, it, I think it's the, it's the kind of incentive that a lot of young people need to put the effort in, um, to go that next step, to do the FAFSA application, to, um, maybe work while they're going to school. Uh, but it just, I think, takes, removes a huge barrier, a huge psychic bar barrier to starting to do all that. Awesome. And and I know in New York, um, there are a lot of different ways, uh, especially with SUNYs and CUNYs and stuff that, that students can go to college without having to um, get all those loans. Whereas a lot of the, the private schools are like really, really high tuitions and stuff like that and it's going up every year. So that's really great that, um, that this is happening in New York City where there are already so many options and this gives students something else uh, to look forward to. Yeah, and I, I'm sure I don't have to tell you, even if those are less expensive ways to go to school, it still costs a lot of money just to live here. So that's um, true. It's, it's so important, even when there are lower cost options to have this additional boost. Oh, absolutely. So um, that was all the questions that I have. I'm not sure if there was anything that you would like to add as well. I think we hit on everything that I, you know, that as I was thinking about sort of what I wanted to talk about, I, I guess... Here's what I would say is I, I think, um, as, as I said, there's a lot that I find brilliant about this program, but what's particularly great is it's built for scale, right? So um, I think there were 35 or 40 of us participating in this most recent round to raise money through the community scholarships. But um, you know, if I'm successful in reaching those classmates that I'm reaching out to, hopefully next time it's uh, 150 or 400. Um, but if it's a 4,000, that system that they built is there. It's really, it's, it's there for all of the folks who learn about this and want to do it. Um, it's just waiting for folks like us to come and fill it in. And I think that's, that's huge, right? It, it, in some ways, it's like, um, you know, you think about big public works projects like building a bridge or building a new transit line, right? This, in some ways, is, to me, strikes me as that kind of thing, even though it's not a physical construction. It's such an important system that's going to really benefit so many, creates a public good that so many people uh, will benefit from over the coming years. Oh, awesome. Well, it was really great meeting with you, and I really appreciate, uh, we really appreciate your sharing your story for our readers. That was awesome.
Thanks for helping to tell it. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Good to meet you also. Take care. Thank you.